Hi everyone, welcome to NetGate Chemistry. So, so far we have covered types of orbitals, penetration and shielding, consequences of penetration and shielding, uh, some knowledge about the d orbitals, why only 5, why not 6, okay. And now we are going to study about types of bonds, okay. So the topic is types of bonds. So before starting types of bonds, I want you to understand types of overlapping actually. What are the types of overlapping? Overlapping can be of two types. We all know that overlapping can be head to head. Okay, or it can be sideways. Whenever there is head to head overlapping, it leads to the formation of sigma bond. For example, if there are two s orbitals, they will form a sigma bond like this. If there are p orbitals, they can form sigma bond. like this okay so whenever there is head to head overlapping it leads to the formation of sigma bond right next is your sideways overlapping in sideways overlapping pi bond can be formed your delta bond can be formed and your phi bond can be formed so delta and phi bonds are very important for those who are studying for net and gate exams right so for sideways overlapping, if these are the two p orbitals, they undergo sideways overlapping like this and leads to the formation of pi bond, right? No doubt there will be positive, positive and negative, negative phase interactions, right? So it can be called two, two sideways interactions okay and these interactions leads to the formation of your pi bond next is see this was your p and this was also your p orbital right next if dd interactions takes place if both the orbitals which are interacting with each other if they both are d then suppose this is one of your d orbital and it overlaps like this with your d orbital one is below this d okay this is one this is one d orbital and below this there is another d orbital how this is one plane of d orbital and this is the other d orbital both are overlapped sideways okay so these are also called four four interactions four four interactions and this type of form, a bond which is formed by 4 4 interactions it is called your delta bond okay this is your pi bond this is your sigma bond this is your delta bond next is your phi bond okay if ff interactions takes place we have not studied much about f orbitals and we did not study much about f orbitals okay just understand that whenever there is interaction between ff orbitals it leads to the formation of phi bond it is actually 6 6 interaction okay and it leads to the formation of phi bond okay so these are the types of overlapping okay which leads to the formation of different types of your bonds overlapping can be of two types head to head and sideways head to head overlapping leads to the formation of your sigma bond sideways overlapping leads to the formation of your pi delta and phi bonds okay when there is two two sideways interaction it leads to the formation of pi bond whenever there is four four interaction it leads to the formation of delta bond and whenever there is 
FF interaction that is 6 6 interaction it leads to the formation of your phi bond okay so so far these are your bonds next we are going to study about the formation of these bonds okay we are going to study about the formation of these bonds let me adjust okay now we are going to study sigma bond formation see for sigma bond formation for sigma bond formation we need to find out the orbitals which are fit to form these type of bonds okay consider your d orbitals which were dxy dyz dzx dx square minus y square okay so if i consider dx square minus y square okay this this is your x axis and this is your y axis if this is your dx square minus y square and it has to form your sigma bond how it is going to form we all know that sigma bond is formed by head to head overlapping it would have been formed like this so maybe dx square minus y square can form your sigma bond we know that s orbitals can form sigma bond but other than that we are going to find out which orbitals are there which can form your sigma bond this is your dx square minus y square now dz square if you remember i have told you the structure of dz square which is somewhat like this right this is negative this ring is negative and this is your positive phase this is your positive phase which is along your z axis right this is your dz square now we have to see whether it can form sigma or pi bond or not or which of the bonds it is going to form see if we want to make a pi bond out of this it is not going to be formed why see if i have another d orbital like this okay another d orbital and i i want these two d orbitals dz square orbitals to make pi bond okay so how they are going to make form pi bond see these two cannot interact these two cannot interact why because there is negative cloud over here negative cloud over here this negative cloud and this negative cloud when come close to each other when come close they repel each other so these two lobes cannot overlap cannot interact with each other sideways so there is no possibility of your pi bond suppose this is the plane this is the plane of your negative charge okay and perpendicular the plane is your these two lobes up and down dz square positive lobes similarly here is the other case these negative charges these negative circles they are not going to they are not letting these two upper and lower lobes to interact with each other they are hindering this is negatively charged this is negatively charged they are going to repel each other and sideways overlapping between these cannot be formed okay so pi bond cannot be possible here now we'll see whether sigma bond is possible or not right for sigma bond what has to be done see this is your dz square right this is your dz square we have to make head to head overlap right for head to head overlap this can be done right for head to head overlap this can be done and this way sigma bond can be formed so a very important conclusion is that dz square forms your forms sigma bonds and not pi bond okay now next orbital dx square minus y square is done dz square is done now dxy suppose this is your dxy like this this is your x this is your y this is your positive this is your positive phase this is your negative and this is your negative phase now okay we'll make p pi d pi p pi d pi overlap we are trying to make p pi d pi overlap i hope you have studied this one so we'll start it again 
so this is your d orbital now for p pi d pi we need p orbital also suppose this is your p orbital and this is the positive face of your p orbital see now sidewise overlap can be done na? positive positive constructive negative negative constructive so sideways overlap can take place so because this is a sideways overlap so that is why it is pi okay this is p this is d and sideways overlap that's why pi so this is your p pi d pi overlap so whenever there are dx y dy z dzx they lead to the formation of your pi bonds okay so we have covered the p orbitals the d orbitals also see the s orbital can form sigma bond very effectively right dx square y square we have already discussed for dz square we have seen that sideways overlap is not possible so it is not going to form your pi bond it is going to form your sigma bond because head to head overlap is possible right for these why head to head overlap is possible see th these are your two lobes these are again your two lobes they can they can interact like this no so this can form your sigma bond so important conclusion dz square can form sigma bond but not pi bond next is your dxy yz and zx so i have taken only one case of dxy this is your dxy okay so it can easily interact with your p orbital so this is how your p pi d pi overlap takes place right so these are your bond formations only okay now we have cut uh, covered you know about the sigma bonds that that's why i have not covered it in this so we have discussed about the sigma bonds the pi bonds in s p and d orbitals so for d orbitals how come these phi bonds maybe delta bonds how these delta bonds are formed we are going to discuss that okay so for that we need a thorough study of our d orbitals which we have done okay we have already covered the basics of that so it's going to be easy for us so in case of d orbitals how delta bond is formed delta bond formation basically we are studying delta bond formation see if we consider our d orbitals these are of two types actually d orbitals are of two types what are the two types one type is your pure d orbitals right and one is your mixed d orbitals mixed d orbital mean dz square because it has formed by the mixing of your dy square minus z square and dz square minus x square right and pure d orbitals are those like d x square minus y square dxy dyz dzx these are your pure d orbitals so for delta bond formations what we have studied is that only d x square minus y square and dxy they form delta bond now why this is the question see in this case the role of dz square is very important dz square by itself it cannot form delta bond okay so what is the use of it the use is that it decides the formation of delta bond it decides the formation of delta bond how see this is your dz square maybe i'm not going to make a ring you have studied this lobe is along x and this is along y right there is another dz square like this okay along x and y so what happens if dz square has formed a sigma bond 
this will be head on head on overlap and sigma would have been formed like that suppose this is x this is y this is x this is y and this is your z direction right so if this is your z direction okay so you know that delta bond is formed by sidewise overlap this this z direction is above and below the plane of this paper right this is above and below and this x and y is the plane of this paper it is the plane of this paper right so if we want to form a delta bond right we need to have sideways overlap between this y and this y and this x and this x these are present along your z axis these are forming sigma bond by head to head overlap these are the orbitals which are present along x and y axis suppose these x and y axis are along your plane of paper right one xy plane is this and other xy plane is below this okay so lobes are present on these planes only okay so what happens they undergo sidewise overlap with each other dz square is present where here above and below this plane like this pen dz square play present here and uh, along x and y axis these lobes are present which are undergoing sideways overlap leading to the formation of your delta bond so this is how your delta bond is formed okay so this concept is very very important okay so when delta bond is formed it is a very very basic concept actually suppose these are your two atoms a and b the first bond which is formed is called your sigma bond okay the first bond formed is called your sigma bond the second bond and the third bond second and third bonds are called your pi bonds okay the fourth bond is your delta bond and the fifth bond fifth bond is your phi bond okay so i think this much is enough for today's video right in next video we'll be covering the topics like the charge contraction theory and the applications of it which is very very important for net and gate point of view so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you think this this information was very or even a little bit helpful for you okay thank you